Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be doing the 25 bookish facts about me tag I think it is. Um, just for because I'm still quite new to booktube it would be a really fun way for you guys to get to know me a bit better and if you enjoyed this I might do like a part two where it's just 25 facts about me non-bookish related so if you would like to see that let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and a comment down below but without further ado let's get into fact number one. I have to finish a book before the month is over like I can't continue a book into a new month it just goes weird with my OCD I can't do it if I have like 200 pages left of a book on the last day of the month, I will read those 200 pages just so I don't continue that book into a new month. <laughs> I love tracking my reading and I track it both digitally and manually in my bullet journal and on a spreadsheet on my computer. I know we all try and deny it, but we are all book cover buyers. Whether you want to admit it or not, if we like the cover of a book, we are more likely to pick up and research more about what the book is about, making us more inclined to read it. Therefore, we are all book cover buyers and I am definitely one. Okay, I'm gonna do this fact quickly because I'm holding up my massive tripod, but that's because I wanted you to see the background books and that's the Maze Runner series. Because after I read Angels and Billy and Me, the next book I physically remember picking up was the Maze Runner series by James Dashner it is still one of my favourite series to date and it just holds a lot of nostalgic feelings towards me. I know it's not the best series but it means a lot to me and I just love the films. Maybe Newt is my book boyfriend, who knows? <laughs> I actually managed to get my boyfriend into reading back when we first started dating and he's actually read some of Booktube's favourite books such as The Maze Runner, Warcross and The Sleeping Giant series. I haven't personally read The Sleeping Giant series but we both buddy read Warcross and I forced him basically to read The Maze Runner and he loves it as a series as well, which makes me happy. I've only ever gone to one bookish event in my entirety of my life and that was a couple of years ago to a book talk, book signing with Giovanna Fletcher, one of my favourite authors, Lindsay Kelk, one of my new favourite authors and Paige Toon, also one of my new favourite authors. I hadn't heard of Lindsay Kelk or Paige Toon before going to this event. I purely went to meet Giovanna Fletcher tell her how much I love her books, how much they mean to me, and to get all my books signed. Um, and on that, dis I discovered two of my new favourite authors. So yes, always say yes to new things and go to bookish events. You never know who you might meet, who you might discover. And yeah, bookish events are just amazing and I really hope that one day I can go to more, but COVID. <laughs> Although I love participating in readathons, I actually have a really hard time completing them if they are anything shorter than a week long. I can't do 24 or a 48 hour readathons. I just, I need my sleep. <laughs> I am a nighttime reader. I do most of my reading between eight to 10 p.m. every single night because I'm usually asleep by about 10.30. We're coming down to my radiator for this fact because one of the facts I wanted to tell you guys is that the first book I ever read in one sitting was The Truth About Forever by Rachel Schrigg. This is the fourth book, I think, in the Three Girls and A series. The first book is Three Girls and a Baby. I read this series way before I even knew Booktube was a thing. And it was the first book I remember reading. I sat by this radiator and read in pretty much one sitting and within the one full day on my old iPad mini. <laughs> it drives me absolutely insane when my boyfriend tries to wind me up by saying audiobooks don't count as books towards my reading goal. <laughs> We're coming in quickly here next to Winnie the Pooh because my favourite classic of all time is Winnie the Pooh. Most likely because Disney is my favourite thing of all time and I've only technically read classics that were put into Disney films such as Peter Pan, Mary Poppins, Winnie the Pooh, Beauty and the Beast etc. Winnie the Pooh just holds such a massive part of my heart. I just adore him, I adore the characters, I adore Disney's version of Winnie the Pooh. It's just yeah, one true love, I think. <laughs> the longest book series I have ever read has been an eight book series, and that's the I Heart series by Lindsay Kelk. None of my close friends actually read. The closest person I have to me that avidly reads and has grown up reading is my dad. But I would say he's been in a reading slump for about two years, and that's why I love Booktube so much, because no matter what, you will be able to find someone who loves the same books as you, hates the same books as you, and everyone can bond over their love of reading. My favourite non-fiction slash memoir to date is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. I've tried reading The Book Thief three times now, and I can never get past, like, the 40-page mark. It, this book is just not for me. 
As you can see behind me, my main form of book purchases and book reading are physical paperbacks. I used to have a blog 100% dedicated to reading and books. Yes, it's still active. Please don't go and check it out. It was called The Mystery Reader because I was anonymous on the World Wide Web trying to be that like cool gossip girl person. <laughs> if a book has anything to do with Disney, it will put a massive smile on my face. However, if an author or a book refers to Walt Disney World as Disneyland, it pisses me off. Another fact about me is that a book has never made me stay up all night long to finish the book. Like, I've never had a book that's made me want to do that. I've always either fallen asleep by accident, even if I really, really wanted to finish the book, or I just haven't wanted to read because I prioritise my sleep a lot. <laughs> One of my favourite tropes is the mundane lives, nothing ever happens in the plot trope, if that's even a trope at all. Some examples are like The House of New Beginnings by Lucy Diamond, Half a World Away by Mike Gale. These books basically are way more character driven and you follow them through their lives rather than having a major plot or plot twist happening within the book. On the other hand, my least favourite trope is cheating slash miscommunication. Just it's a no-go. Every time a book has that, it will probably deduct a star from me. Just like Princess Leia, I cannot pick between Raph and Caden. They are both my book boyfriends. Another fact about me is that the only place I tend to read is my bed. That is just the place I find comfiest and that I can read the most. I can read other places, but my favourite place is definitely my bed. 2020 is my best reading year today and I have COVID to thank for that. And we're gonna end the video off here with my last fact and that fact is Although I read a few fantasy here and there, and The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson is one of my favourite series of all time, it's not a genre I gravitate towards, and I feel that booktube is full of people who read YA fantasy. So if you're a person who doesn't gravitate towards YA fantasy like me, so drop a comment in the box below and we can chat about all things non-fantasy, because I don't read fantasy. <laughs> and I really want to find more booktubers who mainly read contemporary like me, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I had so much fun filming it in all the different locations for you guys, kind of twisting up this video a bit so it's not really stagnant. Are there any facts that you feel the same about? What kind of bookish facts do you have about yourself? I would love to know some in the comments below. But that's it. If you like what you saw and like what you heard, please give this video a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.